Welcome to the Full Dive Gaming Podcast, bringing you a full dive of all the news, discussion, and insights you need for virtual reality gaming. You know this podcast is brought to you by Asterian Products. If you're here watching, you can see I'm wearing their sweater. Nat's repping some mugs. If you check them out, asterianproducts.com, they got different VR Ow. merch and stuff. Code Full Dive saves five dollars on any twenty dollar order. I'm Jay Brat. I'm a VR YouTuber, and I'm actually going to Texas in two weeks to try the new Virtuix Omni One before it launches to the public and give you my thoughts on it. Woo! And I am Nat Brat, a VR enthusiast who is drinking chocolate milk from an Asterian mug. <laughs> and I'm Lipnox, a VR YouTuber who is just chilling. I'm just chilling. That's all I'm doing. Chilling. Nice. Love it. <laughs> you got to keep it chill sometimes. And that's what we do here on our podcast. We keep you up to date in the VR realm. We answer questions from our communities. We talk to you about what's going on in VR news. We discuss the games we've been checking out. If you're listening, you can check us out on YouTube. You can see some footage of those games, see our faces, see our Asterian merge. We got all kinds of Q&A questions. Lip, what have we got? So uh, Mr. Zircon Kill You, one of our <laughs> favorite question askers, uh, he says... Despite being early in its life cycle, do you think the fact that Meta wants devs to support Quest 2 and Quest 3 is holding back the Quest 3 from showing its potential? Does a dev need to release a Quest 3 only game to show what's truly possible? And I'm going to be honest, I think it really has come down to that really isn't an issue. The issue is that it takes several years to actually do a major game and mm -hmm. to actually know what the specs of a Quest 3 would have been. You would have had to do it several years ago. This is why Asgard's Wrath comes out and it's a Quest 2 game. Mm -hmm. They can boost things up to make it, you know, extra good on Quest 3. But I mean, un until we're at least a year, year and a half into the lifespan where developers can properly figure out how powerful the headset really is, mm -hmm. you're, you're probably going to end up in a situation where all these games have been in development at a bar that's already been sort of set. And it really doesn't matter whether or not it's, you know, holding them back or not. It's like these games are already in development. They've already reached that point where it's like, we, we better off just make it work on the thing we know it's going to work on. I also think too, you know, there's all these question marks. We'll talk about that later with the Quest 3S. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that would be a big factor why developers would not want to go and say, let's Let's design it solely for the best headset and potentially be left with 10% of the market of Quest owners. Mm. Boy. You bring up a Very lot of actually points. really interesting points yeah. because that's something that this whole Quest debacle that's it's Meta's created is we keep getting a, basically a new headset every year or two. And right. a good game takes, what, five years to develop? Maybe if you have a really good team. So how can they possibly develop for what's going to be the current headset if f it takes five years of development? There's three different headsets. Yeah. That's yeah. mind boggling. <laughs> That is a very good point. That's um, why yeah. we're getting all these half-baked games. <laughs> well, I mean, look at look at PSVR too. They like so Sony doesn't have anything cooking because it's going to take yep. them a couple of years to get things cooking the right way. And you know, again, we'll talk yeah. about that maybe maybe later. Oh yeah, we will. <laughs> Boy, For that is sure. messy. That's uh, that has me nervous even thinking about the way all the whole. VR system is working right now because it just is going to keep these good big developers from bringing us the good games we want if they can't ever keep up with the headsets themselves. It means more short programs, more short experiences. That's, that's a really big uh, thought to chew on. Yeah. <laughs> I feel sad now. <laughs> so we have another question from Mr. Zerk on Kilu. And uh, this is in regards to our little hiatus that we just had where we did not have an episode come out for six-ish weeks. You know, it was winter. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's my reason. <laughs> but anyway, the question is, when you guys go on break, why not leave the keys to the castle with the play PSVR boys? <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Mm -hmm. And he's referring to the guys from the play PSVR 2 podcast. And I just have to say that that is a horrible idea. <laughs> Those guys have no filters. We're not going to give them the keys to the castle. We'll just, if we're on a hiatus, you guys just have to wait, I guess. <laughs> we'll That's, try not to go on a hiatus. It's again. an interesting question. Yeah. Wild things happen in the winter and uh, there might be some lost episodes too that just never quite made it onto the editing table. But basically the play we'll PSVR 2, they, we've had them on here. They've been guests on here. They have special sections on their podcast like Ask Your Auntie, uh, What Would Your Mom <laughs> Think?, What's your gamer juice and did it come from? Is that the from one that the... made you eat that uh, jelly beans? The jelly beans the and horrible the horrible uh, jelly beans. Burger King chicken thing. Yep. That <laughs> yes. is that is those guys. Fun dudes. But yeah, definitely <laughs> not someone you leave 
a house sitting for you when you leave your house. No. Yeah, definitely not. Make sure there's an adult back on here, though. We got questions. I don't want. I don't want to talk about them anymore. I just want to move on. We got questions from one of our big time question askers. Chili's ninety four says Jay says, "Is it normal to feel bad for not using the VR headset as I've become too busy with work and playing regular games on my console?" It is normal, I think, to feel a little sad about it. I when I sometimes take breaks from VR, you know, I obviously do this all the time. So to me, a break is like if I've been in a headset in three days, I'm starting to feel guilty about it. But It's one of the reasons that VR still has things to overcome before it can become Mm -hmm. truly mainstream and accepted. It is work to pick that headset up and put it on. It is work to stand and play a game. Like at the end of the day, if I've had a rough, rough day, I'm probably going to sit on the couch, turn on the PS5 and play my millionth hour of GTA. I'm not going to (laughs) hop into a VR headset because it's just, yeah, flat (laughs) GTA 5. It's just that much more work to get into a VR headset. And until we have that kind of convenience and those experiences that are just really relaxing, VR still will be kind of difficult it's just where we're at yeah and this is actually something i actually guessed on the play psvr2 podcast a bit ago and this is something we kind of talked about uh where i was talking about how i just have like barely played my psvr and i haven't been playing a lot of vr even though i'm a vr enthusiast and we're just kind of talking about the reasons for that and part of it is just not Well, part of it is just like the physical, like you have to put the headset on and sometimes like it's glitchy, like the quest can sometimes Mm -hmm. be glitchy. You have to like restart it and stuff. And there's also just that like when you're, you know, done with work for the day, sometimes you just want to hang out with like your partner or your friends or whatever, like in real life. And so for me, I feel a little bit isolated if I'm like putting the headset on and I'm like, okay, I'm in my own little world now. I can't really hang out with you. And so that's another thing kind of to overcome, I would say. What about you, Lip? I mean, I mean, honestly, for me, I, I think it really comes down to that there's just not that many good VR games that are, if you've been playing VR for a long time, like you used to be at an age and they were not the best ports, but either way, we had Borderlands 2, we had Skyrim on PC, we even had Fallout. Like there was yeah. exciting games to be excited about. And on PC VR now, there is just it just feel I feel like anything that I'm going to get on PC VR, if it's a new release, it's going to be extremely buggy or unfinished for mm-hmm. years to see if it ever even comes out. And a lot of those I have those games. I can see their cycle and they're like, sometimes they actually finish the project. Ninety percent of the time they don't. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And uh, and I mean, like, I think that's the a big problem is that if I were to be like, you know, what VR games am I that excited to play right now? It's like I'm I'm there's not that many. And uh, when big games come out for console like they have been, you know, I was I was big into Starfield when that, that came out. I took a break from VR, spent a month playing Starfield. You know, I think that's, you know, don't feel guilty about it. Feel feel happy you're enjoying something, because I think yeah. that. If you spend all of your time just entirely focusing on VR stuff, it's just the the, the content runs dry eventually. That's and, true. Uh, you know, and I mean, like some people are going to like forever be happy to just keep playing, you know, the same online game forever. And I like I still love VR chat. Mm-hmm. And there's tons of those online games that people are going to just play forever, like the poker games or the Among Us or Gorilla Tag and things like that. But I really right. think ultimately, if you're if you're into like new, exciting games, after after Asgard's Wrath and like Assassin's Creed and Lego Brick Tales and that kind of like wave, it feels like this is the best time to just say, let's hang the headset up and wait for the wait for the games to come out. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you guys have any more on that, but uh, if uh, if I can continue there, we got. So I'm not a big book reader here, but uh, he's asking any recommendations on audiobooks about VR. And uh, I mean, I, I'm just going to answer this question, even though it's not even the same answer. But uh, I think his name's uh, Brandon Sanderson or something. But he has this Mistborn trilogy and uh, it's like graphic audio. So they get voice actors for all the different characters oh. and sound effects and music. And uh, if you are, you know, someone that is super ADD and doesn't want to read a book, uh, ch- check out this. If you like fantasy stuff like Lord of the Rings and stuff, check out that Mistborn audio graphic audio book might just make you like audiobooks. So it, I don't <laughs> read a lot, but I love that. So nice. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Have you guys seen anything about VR audiobooks? I, I don't know about that at all. I don't think I've seen any VR books in general. 
I mean, the only thing, so I'm thinking, it sounds like he's talking about audiobooks that are about VR, and the only one I can think of would be like Ready Player One. It's the quintessential answer right there. Or now Ready Player Two. (laughs) I do wonder, like, it made me think of like educationally, like, are there books that talk about like VR and stuff? I don't know. I'd have to go look. And actually, that kind of interests me in seeing what they're like. Are they any good? Are they interesting? Because I know mm-hmm. that, like, if you ever watch the gaming historian on YouTube, not big into virtual yeah, reality, yeah. but like, I met him. I met him. Yeah, you I met did. Him. Yeah, when? yeah, I met him in uh, Can- Con Bravo in Canada. Like, That's years awesome. and years ago. Cool. Yeah, I've been watching him for oh, years. I love He's super legit. Historian. Yeah, he talks about yeah, tons of books. So awesome. He reads audio books about like gaming in general. And they're ones that give you like the history that talk about all these different things that happen. So if there are ones about VR already, it's a little early, but there's probably some interesting ones out there if there are. Yeah. So we are super helpful. Yep. We're gonna, we got to go no do research and come <laughs> so, back. We so, need so ready can, player turn one. Around, though, <laughs> there are good documentaries about VR on mm. YouTube that are basically just an audiobook. You just don't watch the video and listen go. to it. True. And, it's, and you could watch you know? them in VR. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you, what are you your could, recommendations you could be sitting for in that? Uh, I would just, I don't know what they were called, but I watched a bunch of different ones that were about just VR that Google were like it. hours and hours long. And what about the HBO nice. one? Did you watch that? The one on VR chat? That one was pretty uh, good. I think I, I think I did. I think we talked about it on the podcast. I think yeah. I watched it, but I kind of like scan watched it because it was so poorly done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember the intro to it was like a terrible the intro. The intro was thought. terrible. Overall, it, not watch it, it but... was interesting, but the intro like could turn you off in a second. Yeah, the intro it was, was dangerous. <laughs> and then also, if you're a fan of Jay Bratt's channel, you can go back to his 10 Days in VR, <laughs> just like video about that. That was pretty interesting. It was kind of like felt a, like a documentary. Yeah, but I guess this is talking about audiobooks. Whatever. Okay, we're moving on <laughs> to the next question. <laughs> Um, so next question from Chili's. Any members on your Discord you'd want to interview on the podcast? Um, I don't know if this is a hint hint. Maybe we should see if Chili's wants to come on the podcast sometime. Mm-hmm. But we have talked to Shave Dog, aka Mr. Zircon Kill You. Um, we've had him on a couple times. Like we had him on back in the day, like early days when we were still recording in VR. So but anyway, yeah, and more we'll recently that. than that, I think Mr. Yes. Zircon Kill You is our most, I can't think of the word, they've most repeated Discord member guesting on the podcast award, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> we should do the SNL thing and give him like a jacket. <laughs> Chili's also asked, who would you guys box in VR? And I kind of wonder, is this going on that whole like weird Mike Tyson thing that's happening? Lip, have you heard about that? Yeah, Jake Paul and Mike Tyson are yeah. boxing. But in I, real life. Honestly, I, I don't even know what's up with Jake Paul. I, I thought it was a joke originally, but now he's apparently in wrestling. He's in all these things, winning things. I'm like, what is this world we live in? What, it's, what, who stepped know, on can... the butterfly, went back in time and screwed it all up? Because this is... <laughs> YouTube superstar, now he's a wrestler, now he's fighting Mike Tyson. What timeline yeah. is that, man? Seriously. <laughs> it's crazy. The guy yeah. is legitimately crazy. He comes in with a star, he has the Charizard, whatever, a Pokemon card in his like neck, but he goes in. I'm just like, man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, and like, this, is this... that a 27-year-old and like a 58-year-old fighting? Is that... Is that elder abuse? Is that child abuse? Like, can that even be legal? That is quite an age span for that. I, I know this I is, we're know, totally I talking know, about I don't know who's signing thing. off for Mike Tyson to even be boxing anymore. I'm pretty sure he should not be in the ring. Yeah, he it's, is, he is, it's he, wild. he will potentially hurt. <laughs> I guess, though, back to the actual question at hand. Who would you guys box in VR? I mean, there's to me, the problem is more... I don't love Creed. I think like Creed's the main multiplayer boxing there is. And the weird stamina dynamic and it drives me crazy. But uh, and the swimming. Yeah. Yeah. The movement with the with the hands. <laughs> I hate but that so much. I hate I mean, that so much. If anybody out there is like, oh, I want to box VR, I mean, I guess I'd play around with them just for fun. Yeah, I mean, uh I, I would I would say it's like who who would who would get who would you guys box in VR? I, I would say like maybe there's a rival podcast we could be like <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're shaking down we're your turf. You <laughs> I, I was thinking turf. rough talk. They're fun. <laughs> they would do it. You know? <laughs> oh, they're they're like MMA guys though. They're gonna have an advantage. So wait, they are. Maybe, they maybe they the almost advantage started. They think they have an advantage. They almost started we'll an MMA all our podcast tactics. first. So I know oh, that I didn't about know them. That. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that'd be fun. There you go. Rough talk. I guess VR. we'll. I guess we we'll see what you. happens. 
<laughs> I don't. Nat does. In VR. In VR. Yeah. Not in real life. As soon as, 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 soon as, 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 soon as Thrill the Fight 2 comes out and it has multiplayer. There you go. That and would be I the will game lose, for it. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll have fun, though. And I won't get hurt in real life, so that's good. Yes. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, another question, Chili's. With old video games becoming harder to preserve over time, do you think all the games on the Meta storefront could be wiped from existence in a few years? Yeah. And uh, so you could say that, but in reality, and this is a questionable topic to say, but there is an enormous amount of people that are ripping every single game with every update that exists for every single thing and storing it on something. And I guarantee you in five to 10 years, if or whatever, if Meta shuts that store down, someone's going to make an app. You can just download every Mm. single game in the store for free. So I really wouldn't worry about it. (laughs) This stuff is backed (laughs) up extremely intensely by a bunch of very smart people that don't want to pay for stuff. So, they won't uh, disappear. It'll be They'll a... eventually become free. <laughs> yeah, they won't. They won't disappear. This it's like the 3ds. People are like, oh, you know, these digital eShop 3ds games are going to become extinct. Well, now I've just installed something on my 3ds that I can just download every single game, including those games, completely for free. Do a different, and but it... uh, it's they're all authentically on the system. They're all the same games that I would purchase, but <laughs> it just won't work for people like me that will be too scared to do that because they'll be like. <gasps> But that's piracy or whatever. I'm going to go to jail. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, in Canada, it's a gray market, but this is an interesting point that Chili's brings up, I think, because there is some issues going on right now. Do you remember a game, Virtual Rickality, that was Rick and Morty made by the Job Simulator people? And basically, due to something that's going on with Warner Brothers, they're actually delisting some Adult Swim games. And that means that Rick and Morty Virtual Rickality could be delisted and basically wiped off the face of the earth if that were really to happen. Obviously, there are physical copies floating out there, but digital copies could be pulled from all the stores. And so it makes you wonder with games on meta only being digital, is that a risk? So Lip, how do you feel about losing virtual reality possibly? So, uh, I mean, I think it's a I think it's a blessing. We can only hope this happens. (laughs) Uh, I personally had no love for this game. I paid $40 because I loved Rick and Morty. And I love Job Simulator. And I was like, this is going to be the best thing ever. (laughs) $40 later, I don't like this at all. This is just, this feels like a a job that I went and worked for four hours, but I I paid them to do it. That's what it felt like to me. And and Rick and and Morty waved at me one time and said, hey. You know, I disappear. I I, I, I mean, I I don't want to rag on the game too much because I did play it on PSVR and this me seeks thing or whatever it was we had to shoot the gun and the p- person had to be in like mm. a third person yeah, grabbing weird. really was not good for psvr i could just walk around my play space that probably would have been a lot better yeah uh, but i did play through the game from start to finish twice and i guarantee you the only part of it that was any fun was maybe shooting and then the troy or roy cardboard mm. side story mm. thing so uh, i mean all, all the power to them but i, I really felt like <laughs> you want to play a rick and morty game play accounting plus Mm. I feel like I feel like that's more of a Rick and Morty game than I feel like the Rick and Morty game is. And Accounting Plus is, I think, free on on Steam VR, and uh, I think it's like ten bucks on PSVR. I don't know if it's on PSVR too, but probably. So what if they took Accounting Plus away? Okay, then Then I'd be upset. Then you just download it from someone. I mean, it's yeah, it'd it'd be easily pirated. But uh, (laughs) so I did, I did. So I did think of something when I, when when Jay was talking there. I did think of one thing. So uh, if it's an online only game like VR chat or something, it's probably not going to be. You can't just like bring it back. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's true. Like if if Rec Room decides to close our doors one day, like you probably can never mm. go back into those worlds ever. That would be so sad. <laughs> You'll just go play paintball alone and cry in the corner. Aww. <laughs> basically <laughs> well it's just like i go Sad. into i go into vr chat and i play play and i to visit some of the playstation home worlds from mm. back in the day ps3 had and i'm thinking to myself in some day i'm going to be nostalgic about being nostalgic yes true <laughs> double nostalgia <laughs> i'm not going to be able to even go into these worlds through vr chat anymore and i'll feel nostalgic about playing vr chat playing playstation home <laughs> full circle <laughs> Gosh, I feel like this. So many of our answers are a bit of a downer. I feel like this is just kind of a well, sad I mean, I, episode. I, I, I mean, getting Everyone. all the games for free, getting all the games for free was pretty good. There yeah, that go. was that was a good thought. 
Everyone enjoy this episode. Yay. We're going to push into the news. The, it's that seasonal <laughs> depression. Seasonal you know, affect that's, disorder. That's why We're we all coming needed our it. that's why we needed our 6 week hiatus so we could <laughs> get out of it but it's still lingering <laughs> nah, we, no ev- everyone needs to get those get those sweaters <laughs> we got news <laughs> yes. to talk about but we first we gotta tell you again asterian products has these brightly colored sweaters that can help with your seasonal affect disorder <laughs> this message has not been evaluated <laughs> by the food and drug administration though but if you go to asterianproducts.com oh code full dive is going to save you five dollars off any order lip do we have better positive news to talk about I mean, uh, depending on your your value of of, of this information, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, how about those leaked Quest Three images and early specs? Will the Quest Three S lead to a Quest Three price drop? And that was and, from uh, Mister Zircon. Kill from you Zircon, again. From Zircon, from Zircon, yeah. And uh, a leak originally posted on Reddit showing early images of Quest Three S. Uh, some of them. The pictures, they were still wearing Quest 3s, but then it was just like a prototype Quest 3S kind of image. Uh, it looks like it's probably true. I, almost everything that leaks nowadays for meta headsets just ends up being true. So yeah. I, mean, yeah. I just I just believe it anyway. No one cares enough to fake these images. They just seem to leak anyway. <laughs> uh, but originally, you know, I thought, oh, there's no way. This, but it seems every single one is just leaked. So no one cares to That's fake true. meta stuff for them. <laughs> but basically, at the end of the day, though, I think that it, it looked fine. Fine. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. think it's going to... I mean, will will a Quest Three S lead to a Quest Three price drop? Would did the Nintendo Switch Lite lead to a Nintendo Switch price drop? Maybe <laughs> maybe fifty bucks. I don't know. I think what it's, it, I feel like I feel like that's the reason you don't have the price drop. What it might do, and what actually <laughs> happened today, is the Quest Two price drop. Another fifty dollars now down to one hundred ninety nine ninety nine. Mm. So that would make sense if they need to clear out Quest Two stock before they launch the Quest Three Lite, Quest Three S, whatever they call it. That's and very if cheap. All these rumors are fueling that, or if Meta's trying to get rid of those last hundred twenty eights, that is. <sighs> wildly cheap for what a quest 2 is capable of even in this day and age which is cool but also are they gonna brick the quest 2 i mean it'll still work but are they gonna are we gonna get more quest 3 exclusives we already are getting some like will they move on from the quest 2 quickly after that possibly but they have to keep in mind it is the biggest headset in the world still that's true that's a good point so way bigger than the three so yeah this is a good thing this is a nice news piece that people can be (laughs) excited about (laughs) a new headset and a super price drop quest 2 which is great in itself and so this this quest 3 s which for some reason is the light version i don't know why they would call it s because usually s shit like super good i guess so i guess that's (laughs) what it is in this case what is that small i think it's small (laughs) but it's bigger it means small it's bigger that's the thing it looks from the renders like the way they're saving money is they're not using pancake optics. They're using oh, old Fresnel okay. lenses, which mm. means a thicker headset. The headset looks a lot like the Oculus Go or even like a Quest 2, honestly. Mm. Thicker headset, probably still a little more front heavy, less of the big sensors. You know, it may not have depth sensors. It may just be using cameras. So all of those things are where they may save cost. So it's definitely not smaller. It's just... What? Less. I think good. they just stole Xbox's naming because Xbox has the Xbox One S, right? And the and Xbox that's the worst Series naming S. in the world. Why would anyone and steal that from that? that? Sense. I what? literally have no what? idea what Xbox to go buy if I was to buy one because there's so many stupid letters and I don't know what anyone. <laughs> Quest is now doing this is Quest Three and Quest Three S. Yeah, uh, yeah same exact that's problem. True. Yeah, terrible this idea. Is, what is the point what? of this? Why are they doing this? There's already a Quest Two to replace like, the Quest Two. About because because they need color pass through they need what? color pass through oh. on a cheap headset. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess that makes They need sense. color pass through on a cheap headset. That's all it is. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, woohoo, Quest 2 price drop. Yay. So we got more positive news, right, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> but no, actually, uh, we're going to bring it back down for everybody. So and I blame here. Chili's because Chili's asked, with the recent news of Sony pausing production of PSVR 2, what do you think the company will do to sell more product? Now, Chili's is framing this in more of a curious way, but I'm bringing it to being sad because I, I just want to talk about how sell it 
silly. Sony is pausing production of PSVR 2 because the sales of the PSVR 2 are slowing. That's the basic news point there. And so I'm just worried that we're never going to get an Astrobot 2. Do we think Sony's going to stop making new games? And we we had this news about potentially PSVR is going to be like PC compatible, which maybe that'll be good. I don't know. I'm just like, Sony, I feel so disappointed with Sony. So anyway, Chili's' question was, what do we think Sony's going to do to sell more products? I don't think they care. I feel like they pooped out the PSVR 2 and then we're like whatever they just felt like they needed to and now they don't even care man I this really is a sad episode (laughs) what do you guys think I mean it costs like $700 for a PS5 and then it costs $700 for a PSVR 2 Canadian prices but yeah (laughs) yeah so I mean like I mean after tax there I'm like yeah you know I I I just I just don't want that. And then yeah. and then to top it all off, it's like, what am I playing? Oh, the exact same right. games I can get on my quest, but they're just wired now. Yeah. And slightly better graphics. There's a couple yeah. there's a couple games. There's a couple games, like mm-hmm. five of them. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and a couple of the hype games that were super this is gonna save the system were so terrible. I think the company went out of business. One of them at least. Firewall. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, they they did not survive. So, so it's like even more. Sad. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just, it. I I, I want to feel bad, but it's like, it's why was they well. did, Sony didn't Sony didn't research no. what was going on in the VR space to create that. They just kind of no. created something that was a sequel to the thing they already made with yeah. no consideration to what everyone else was doing. Honestly. And yeah. in the same time, it's just they didn't pushed any big games like if if they had said within the first like if if like a year after psvr 2 came out they're like here's spider-man 1 we've remade it fully in vr people would have gone crazy for that that would have sold headsets Mm -hmm. but i you know as impressive resident evil is resident evil is not gonna that's the only game that's the only thing resident evil 2 resident evil games is the only reason i feel like i would want a psvr 2 or feel like i'm missing out on not having one yeah so it's just you know, hope, hopefully this PCVR thing becomes a thing because honestly, I kind of fear what kind of like library you're going to have on PlayStation VR solely. And yeah. I don't know if I can get a PSVR 2 for like 400 bucks and it works on my PC. I'd, I'd be down with that. So maybe that is the answer to Chili's question. If they can figure out a way to just make it work with PC, maybe they'll start selling those things because it really does make sense. Like because you have to get a PS5 and for a while, like PS5 was really hard to get. And even now, like it's still super expensive. And so having those two expensive things you have to buy just makes it too much for people. Like with the PS, the original PSVR, a lot of people already had PlayStation 4s at that point. But so early in the life cycle of the PS5, it's a tough sell to have people buy two of these expensive things. So yeah, that makes sense. Make it PS. Granted, it has been PC almost, compatible. Has it been almost four years since the PlayStation 5 launched? Has is it? Is that right? November There's 12, no 2020. Way that's right. November 12th There's of 2020. There's no way that's right. What? Is that when that happened? There's no way that's right. No. <laughs> 2020 was such a blur that it feels impossible that that's... Uh, I can't thing. be right. Oh, I have to man. look this up. <laughs> what? I don't believe okay. you. <laughs> if that's true, well, it was in, like, the pandemic, like, weird... This so the it time warp count. that we all experienced yes. there. I mean, That's it was it was November, for. but time warp. It was November's, Gosh. but oh. wow, it's weird <laughs> to think like that. Jeez. Yeah, the the PSVR two, it just was not lip lip nailed it. It they made a headset that was a great sequel to a PSVR, but was not good compared to what the rest of the industry yeah. had progressed to uh and it's showing and sony isn't investing in great first party titles either which was another reason the psvr one was a must buy but it also it was just the cheapest it wasn't the best headset people had tons of complaints about it but it was so cheap for good vr that people bought it they they can't get away with that anymore the quest 2 is 149 dollars at walmart today like you yeah. can't compete that's and impossible. there's a million free games on a Quest 2, whereas PSVR 2 has like virtually nothing that's free on it. I don't think even much YouTube Cowboy. on it. Cactus Cowboy <laughs> is free. <laughs> is, is Rec Room even on PSVR 2 nope. yet? They said it wouldn't be financially <sighs> yeah. worth making it for PSVR 2, Which is so they really aren't going to make it. 
Yeah. You don't even have a metaverse on your VR headset. Like, yeah. No, you got nothing. And it was like when PlayStation or when PSVR, the original one, came out, it was pretty early in the whole VR time. Like, there wasn't a lot else out there. It was like super expensive or super cheap and not that great. It was like kind of getting in this middle ground. And so it kind of made sense. And I looked it up. It was like three years after the PS4 came out. And so like it's, you know, people already have those. They're going to bring this in. But now, like you said, like we have all these super cheap, good headsets. It just doesn't make sense. And the fact that they, it's seriously like they just created the PSVR 2 in a vacuum. Like they had no idea what was going on with VR. Like, (sighs) Anyway, I feel like we should move on to the next section. <laughs> well, well, the thing I about... I think there's something positive coming next. I hope there is. I hope it's <laughs> the... something positive. <laughs> well, you didn't get Astrobot too, but to the rescue comes Max Mustard, a 3D platforming <laughs> title from the creators of Richie's Plank Experience. And Nat, you spent some time mm. in Max Mustard today. Did it rekindle your Astrobot love? So we had a very long discussion about Max Mustard here, but only Jay and I had played it. Lipnox hadn't. So we figured we'd wait until Lipnox played it and then go back and we're going to do a full mini episode on Max Mustard. So stay tuned for that. And we're going to go right into the next little section where Lipnox talks about Citra VR. There's something else for you, and uh, it's called Citra VR, and it's a basically an emulator for the 3DS that you can play on your Quest natively, Quest 2 and Quest 3. I don't know if Quest 1 works. Probably wouldn't even try it on Quest 1 because of the specs. But you can run quite clear 3D version, like 3DS games in 3D. You don't have to like, struggle looking at the screen. You can literally just see it in 3D in front of you of uh, a significant portion of the the better games play super mario 3d land you know (laughs) pretty it's pretty awesome game and you know okay yeah you're only getting a frozen screen here and there is some things with it you can do like a full screen with new modes but uh, i don't i don't want to mess with that stuff too much but i would say that you know play super mario 3d land you got your 3d screen in front of you just focus on it and play that so just (laughs) just do that platformers yeah ocarina of time yeah, oh. full 3D. Oh, Majora's yeah. Mask, full 3D. You want to play some Mario Kart, full 3D. Like, mm. I don't know. I, I I feel like I'm struggling to find Can't things beat excited on the on the Meta Store. But uh, you know, this is definitely one of the things I've been playing the past couple months that I've been like, yeah, I I love the 3DS. Awesome system. Tons of great games. Animal Crossing, Pokemon's. Like, there's tons of games that are just super fun to play right now. A lot of people want Metal Gear Solid in, in VR. Well, there's Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater in 3D. So there's there's that. And you can use your touch controllers. You don't have to have other controllers. You can still use your touch controllers. Uh, or you can plug in PS4 or whatever controller you want, Bluetooth, and it's legit. Uh, I mean, the ga- how the game works, you load 3DS files that you get from backing up your 3DS ROMs and or finding places on the internet that did that for you. You know, only your copies you own, of course. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I liked it a lot. It didn't give me any motion sickness, but I would be cautious of the settings because mm. the default settings seem to like to like max the graphics out big time, which Ooh. worked great for Ocarina of Time. But the uh, FPS definitely struggled with some of the other games. So I had to tweak some of the graphical settings a little bit, which didn't take any. It took like five seconds. It was just in the settings. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it's free. So yay, obviously. Yeah. Uh, if you if you if you like 3ds and you want to play your 3ds games in a VR headset, go for it. Awesome experience. Nice. Citra does look amazing. I've been wanting to try that. Yeah. Good. See, we're bringing it back up. Citra VR. <laughs> Picking it up get at it. the end of the episode. Yeah. Hey, you gotta you gotta get that. You gotta get the good platforming on because you know there's there's probably not gonna be any new Astrobots and uh, <laughs> so you're gonna have to settle. Go with Nintendo. Go with the classic. You know. Yes. Get some Mario in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you out there to all of you listening. We are here for you on the audio platforms or on YouTube if you want to come see us. But thank you once again. If you've been thinking about VR, you can get a Quest 2 for $149. Yeah. That means it's time. That's pretty awesome. Finally. Dive on in. Oh, dive on in. 